Kelsey, talk to us a little bit about what's going on in here today. We are having the students, they made quick bread today. So they measured, mixed, and baked snickerdoodle muffins. Ooh. Oh, it smells so good in here. Yeah, it smells heavenly. Is this your first time making muffins? Like it came out, I thought it was gonna look like cupcake batter. Yeah. But it definitely did not look like cupcake batter. Was it so a- So I thought I messed up. A smooth batter or a chunky batter? It was chunky. Chunky yeah. batter, yeah. Those batters always kind of confused me. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Do you want to get a review of it? How's the texture? Is it nice and fluffy? Oh, it's Is it very dense? <laughs> Tell us what oh you my feel. gosh, that is awesome. That is very good. Yeah. What would you describe as the flavors? What's a snickerdoodle? You know, it's cinnamony, like cinnamon and sugar and everything wonderful. I mean, that is just amazing. That's awesome. We better stop. Food Network will take him over. So. Yeah. <laughs> we are currently learning about 19th century America and we're learning about the Civil War and the causes of the Civil War. The judge says that Dred Scott is not a person. What is it? He's property. Do you all like having these kind of discussions? Like, has it helped you as an individual just talking to your fellow classmates about this and just get talking about it? Not just this particular subject, but just these conversations like this. Yes, it makes me feel more involved and I get a better grasp of the situation and um, the information I get and others' opinion on the topic we're right. talking about. Yeah. And so I think it helps me a lot. So how do you think this is going to help you later in college or in work? I mean, it's, it's good to know, like, history in general, so, like, because history repeats itself, and then people usually act the same, and you can expect certain behaviors. That's a great answer. I like that answer. I would steal that as my answer. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Tell us about the space in here, right? This well, is an unusual what setup. What do you think? Welcome to the teacher house. As you can see, this is a collaborative space. I think one benefit of being at a school like this, because I've been teaching for 15 years and this is my fourth year at Glenn, it's like I feel the closest relationship to my colleagues here than I ever did anywhere else. This is the most that I've ever, like, um, I felt like worked with other teachers. I'm going to cry <laughs> because um, they really are, we really are, it really does create a good team. And um, I know that they're there for me and I'm here for them too. So I, I, I enjoy this space. Awesome. Oh, she's going to make me close. Oh my goodness, we're in the 20s. Ooh, that's where I want to go. So what do you notice? What instruments do you hear? How does it make you feel? What's really resonated with the students? We talked about the transition from World War One, where things were very sad and depressing and, you know, human beings really realized um, how hard they could be on each other. And I think the Roaring Twenties, I really try to instill in the kids that people were ready to have fun, people were ready to feel a little bit more lighthearted after, you know, an era of war, of war-torn world. Right. So yes. we talk about the transition there and I want them to be able to see the differences. What do you think about this, about the Roaring Twenties? What's one thing um, you've taken away about this? That they were very rebellious. So tell me, at the end of the school year, mm -hmm. right, when the kiddos are done, um, what do you think? Are you going to feel like you've accomplished what you wanted with them? I would say we're on track. In fact, I've seen a lot more student engagement this mm -hmm. year than I felt like in the past. It seems like students almost missed school and they're ready to learn. I don't know, just hearing them talk to you guys today yeah. has made me feel really accomplished. Very Sometimes you think, you know, that it's in one ear and out the yep. other, and then they say something about how this indicates a change in lifestyle, which makes me happy. Happy yes. teacher heart. They're listening. Yes, <laughs> they're yes. listening. They so. are. These students, they're very very um, driven and I think a big part of it is just them getting back to having interactions not only with them with their peers but with teachers again and going back to uh, um, having someone direct them and have having to relearn how to be led again is a big thing our special ed kids are thrilled to be back truly um, virtual learning was very difficult for them um, they didn't have the social connection that they needed. They didn't have the a lot of the support that they needed. It's just great to have them back, to be back, um, to interact with them because they are special relationship kiddos. Being an AP teacher, my classes had like five to ten kids in them and now they're back to being full. Yeah. And so it's been an adjustment for me and it's been an adjustment for them and it's been nice because last year, I mean, I just felt like, I felt like a horrible teacher. I, I, you know, I, I try to pride myself on being a good teacher and being there for the kids and establishing relationships with the kids, and it was hard to do virtually. And so now having those kids back, it's made a big difference, and 
yeah, it's nice to, and it's nice to get feedback and yeah. to say, you know, when you, you tell a joke, the kids are actually laughing. And when, <laughs> and, you know, and I saw the ones from last year and they're like, no, I promised I was laughing. I just was, you know, my screen was black. <laughs> Anna, you know what would make this visit complete? What is that? I think if we could get our hands on that snickerdoodle recipe. The visit is complete. Go, Go Grizzlies! Grizzlies.